Hey guys, in this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can go about creating a script for your database or a database backup. So the scenario is that you, you've done all you need to do with designing your database on your dev machine. And now you need to actually promote your database to the production or to another environment, or whether it is that, or you want to just share your database with a friend or with a family member for whatever reason, or you just need to move it between machines, or maybe you just need a copy. The point is that SQL Server, my, um, SQL Server 2017 actually gives you some tools that allows you to kind of create uh, either a backup of the database or just script down the database so that you can actually run the script on another instance or computer and recreate the database. So we're going to go through that right now. Now, the first step, of course, is to have created your database, gotten to a level of satisfaction with its design, and then we're going to now script it. So if you're using SQL Server Management Studio, you can right click your database and then go to tasks. And then in tasks, you see an option that says generate scripts. So let's start with that one. As you can see, you have quite a few tasks you can do. You can detach it. You can take it offline. You can do a number of things. But in this video, we're just looking at how we can export it to a script. So I'm just going to ex to generate scripts. And then this brings up a little wizard so we can click next. And then it asks us, do we want to ex script the entire database and all files? sorry and all objects or do we want to be very selective in the types of objects so you know we have functions or stored procedures we have views we have tables i want everything so i can just leave it at the first option to just you know blindly take everything anyway and then we go to next and then they ask us do you want to save the script to a file which would then create an sql file at a place of our preference do you want to copy to the clipboard, which means that after it does what it's supposed to do, we have to find somewhere to paste it, right? So it would just automatically be copied to the clipboard. Or do we want to save to a new query window because maybe we just want to see the script instead of having it for future reference. So I'm actually going to choose a save to new query window option so that after we're finished, it will open up and we can review it. And then we click next. And then we see the source and so on. So we can just click next once again. And then the operation begins. Once that operation is completed, we see that the script file kind of loads behind the wizard window. And then we can click finish. And then we're going to see our beautiful script that looks, you know, nothing like what we've written. It's very strict. SQL standard with a bunch of parameters that we wouldn't even have looked at. So you see auto shrink, you see ANSI. So it does a, a bunch of pre operations, prepping the database for generic settings, I'm guessing, or based on the configurations of your machine. And then we create the functions and we create all of the objects as we go along. So here the create table statement is there. So we would know how to script all of these, but of course the scripting is going to be a bit more complicated than what we've done because then we have some relationships like on the enrollments table, it has three relationships. So you're going to see a few constraint lines of code. And you know, it's, it's quite complex, it's quite nice. However, what's missing from this, and if you look, you'll see that this one this section is creating some properties and the diagram. So that, that means if I execute this script on another machine, it will create a database called school with all of these objects in there. So that's a database school. So if I wanted a different name, I could say underscore V1, right? But of course, if I change create database underscore V1, then everywhere the database is referenced which is school, I would have to make sure I modify the script accordingly. But the point is whatever would appear after this script is generated will be um, eligible to be run on another machine and it will give us back the database. As it stands, this gives us an empty database because, well, it creates all the tables and all the functions and sort procedures, but it does not 
bring over the data itself. So this is method number one. This is when you want just a blank, fresh database. The design is intact. The name is intact, but there is no data. In a situation where you want a script file that gives you the data, and the data obviously is relative to what's in the database as at the time the script is run, which means if something gets added thereafter, then the script file will not reflect it. But we can right click, go to tasks, go to the same generate scripts option, and then we go to next and we can leave that option again. But in this screen, what we need to do, and I'm going to do it a new query window, just the same, but what we need to do differently is go to advanced. Now in advanced, there is a category where it says, do you want the, what types of data do you want to script? And then the options available to us are schema only, which is the default. We can drop it down and say we want only the data, which to me doesn't make much sense unless you're creating the database or you have the database already and you just want the data now. But then you also have schema and data. And by selecting schema and data, it would give us what we already have, which is the database structure generation script and also the script that inserts data into the respective tables. So I'm going to choose schema and data, click OK. I'll leave it to go to a new query window so we can analyze it also. Click next twice and then wait for the operation to be completed. Click finish. And now if we look through, we, we can just scroll a bit and we'll see that we're now in the insert section. So any data that was in the database as at the time that task was done, we are now seeing the insert scripts that will insert that very data into the respective tables. So all of the lecturers or teachers who would have been in the system, they are being inserted now, all of the students and all of those wonderful things. So that's how you could go about exporting a database or exporting a script, creating a script rather, that exports both the structure and the data that was in the database at that time. Now, another technique that is used, and this is probably the more commonly used technique by database administrators who want to keep backups of their database is to actually back up the database. Now, the difference between a script file and a backup is that the backup is usually taken as a file that can be restored at any point and you will just have a database. So let me demonstrate that one. So if I right click the school database, I go to tasks and then instead of going down to generate scripts, I go to backup and I click that. That brings up this menu where, or this dialog box where I choose the database. So I can confirm that I want to back up the school database. I want the backup type to be full and well, the component is database, and then I choose a path for the backup file. I notice that the file extension is .bak. So this is a path that will be very hard to find. So I'm just going to remove that quickly, and I'll just click Add, and I'll use the ellipsis button to browse to a folder somewhere, and I'll just put it on the C drive so we can find the file easily. And I'm just going to call this one school.bak. So .bak, once again, is that backup file extension. So we click OK, and then we have different options. We have media options where you want to add on to an existing backup. Um, sometimes that's not a good option because if the existing one is corrupt, then you don't want to, you know, be use the corrupt one. So um, you would want to do that. And then you have this one that says backup set where the backup will expire after X number of days. So we can actually just leave all of those at the default settings for this example. You have full and you have differential. So differential is more like a, an increment whereas full says, give me everything anyway. And then we click OK. And then it's saying that the access is denied. And that's because I'm going directly to my C drive on this server. So let me let me do that again. So I'm going to remove. I'm going to click Add. And instead of going to the C drive directly, I'm going to go to, all right, so I don't have a suitable folder. So I'm actually just going to go into my C drive and I'm going to create a folder. So I'm just create a folder and I'm going to call it BAK. 
and then let's try that again so in this screen i'm going to actually have to cancel and then do it again so that i can actually see bak as an option and then once again this is school.bak and i click ok and then ok and then access is not denied this time that backup is completely completed successfully and i can click ok so if i go in the bak folder then i will see that i have a backup file for my database so i can actually just you know share this with somebody and they can restore and they get that database copy as at that point in time or I can, you know, what if maybe my machine was going down or something, I needed a backup of the database or today's database copy got corrupted and I have the BAK file from yesterday. Of course, there would be some loss of data, but the point is that I would actually have a database copy as at that point in time when that backup was taken. So let's pretend that we're restoring our school database onto our server. Something happened, we have the backup file, but we need to restore it to our server. So I'm going to go to databases, right click, and then you'll see that your options are attached, meaning you got maybe an, what you would call an MDF, F as in fire, file. Um, and then that would allow you to just, you know, attach the database because you already have the database. So as you see them here, they're really what you call M, M as in man, D as in dire, and F as in fire, um, MDF files. Right, that's what the database files are stored as. But once they're in backup form, they're .bak. So if I had an MDF file, I could restore that MDF and it would appear in the listing. It would now be added to the server. I don't have an MDF file, I have a BAK file. So I need to restore the database to the server. So I can just select restore database. And then this dialog box asks me what I would like to do. So first I'm going to select device which means that I don't have a database itself, but I need to go on the device to find the backup file. So I click the ellipsis, I click add, and then I navigate to where I know my backup is, which is my BAK folder in my C drive. So I click OK, and then I click OK again. And then you see it does some kind of operation and detects that this was a school database and it's a full backup and everything, you know, it shows you the last transaction tags and the start date and the finish date as at the time. So once again, if you are doing a daily backup as a database administrator, this is the more recommended method. And if anything goes wrong along the way, obviously you lose some data, but this is a nice clean way to restore your databases. So one thing though, is that I already have a school database. I don't want another school database or another database with the name school that's illegal. So I'm going to call this one school underscore BAK, just to show you that this was the backup file that was being restored. So I can do that where I rename the database file and then click okay. And then it does a restoration. And if you look over to the object explorer, you now see that I have three databases, one with the name school underscore BAK. So I click OK. And then if I, you know, just go in there, I'll see all of the objects that were in the original database, all the views, all the stored procedures, everything that would have been there originally. If I right click on teachers and select top 100, all of the data that was there as at the time of the backup is once again available to me. So the reality is that as a database developer, you need to know how to build a clean database. You need to know how to manipulate data, sure. But then as a database administrator, it goes a bit deeper than just performing the basic CRUD operations where you actually are responsible for the health of the database and furthermore for the integrity of the data on a daily basis. So these are techniques that, you know, as a database administrator to be, you need to be cognizant of and you need to be comfortable with doing on a daily basis to make sure that everything flows for your organization.